have a seat. We're going to spend a few minutes chatting with Meredith as well. I know you probably have questions for her, so please feel free to tweet your questions to us at hashtag out and equal, and we'll take those here in a moment as they start coming through. Um, first of all, Meredith, thank you so much for being here. Thanks. It's such a treat for so many of us. Um, you mentioned that you have obviously been interviewed hundreds of times. You've been on, you know, in People Magazine, Oprah, The Today Show, etc. Is there anything that you would have done differently during that entire process or around that decision that you would want to share? Uh, I, I, don't, I don't know. I, you know. I don't know that it could have happened any other way for just the way I'm wired, you know. Uh, I, I, I would love it. It would have been nice if it hadn't had to been so public. Um, I found that just excruciating. I thought I was setting myself on fire on national television. I thought, you know, I, I was beside myself. However, you know, as I've said, the, the upside is, I, you know, I, and, and it's not unlike when, when I wrote the book, I had kind of one agenda, but in coming out and having this whole process, it's like, oh, oh, I have something to offer. Right. I have my stories, just like the stories that we got to hear here, you know, the people talking, and, and Rick, what an incredible story. What a gift that was to hear that. Um, I, we, we, it means so much to be able to hear what other people's processes were. Because the truth is, you know, I may be the only lesbian someone knows. That's right. You Absolutely. know, and, and so I get to carry the weight of all of that, in, you know. <laughs> yeah. But if I am okay, and I get to say, yeah, I'm gay, yep. but I'm also an actor. I trained longer to be an actor, believe me, than I ever did to, you know, to be gay. <laughs> so. It's just a part of me, and it's probably the least interesting part of me. But that's so sad, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I think we're finding it all very interesting, however. But go ahead. But, but it's true. And so if someone, um, if someone knows you, and you're, if you're struggling to come out, and if, and if someone knows you in another arena, in your workplace, whatever it is, and you have always been reliable and kind and thoughtful and loving and giving, it's just another aspect Absolutely. of your life. And I was sure that people were going to go, oh, you're gay? <laughs> you know, and it so didn't happen like that. Well, and what were the reactions? What, what well, the, they'll tell you, the worst stuff was the, you know, never read the comments on YouTube or on yeah. the internet. <laughs> yeah, that, don't, that's oh a very good idea not God, to read those. Yeah. That's the worst place to go. But people, one-on-one, -on -one, yeah. when it's not anonymous, have been wonderful. Awesome. Wonderful. Well, now, what about the process with your family? And I know you talk about this in your book. Tell us a little bit about how the process went, because as we mentioned, you have five children and obviously, you yeah, know, scads of other family. Um, do you know, um, my mother was dead. And the truth is, I don't think I could have ever come out. I would not have ever turned my headlights on me more intensely had my mother still been alive. Uh, so that was, I didn't have to worry about that. I wasn't speaking with my father anyway. But my, ki my oldest boy said, ah, oh, Mom, I knew. Yeah. Isn't that always the way? Yeah, yeah I, I don't believe that for a second. He's just a smart ass. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> um, and uh, my other kids basically said what I would like any adult to say to their child who comes out to them. Say, oh, Mom, we just want you to be happy. Yeah. It was so not a big deal to them. Yeah. The most fun. Thank you. Was that not great? You know, I, I did have a relationship with my stepdad, my mom's uh, second husband, who was just an adorable comedy writer, producer. And uh, I met him for tea one day, and I thought, you know, I, I got to say something. I got to say something. I got to say something. And uh, he's mixing his Earl Grey, and I said, Alan? I'm dating women. And he goes, oh, me too. <laughs> that was it. It's the way it always should go, right? I That's know. how we wish it always yes. went. Well, you're sitting in a room of about 2,500 LGBT professionals along with their allies, um, many of whom, and you, you heard it certainly, and Rick shared a bit of that, the, the terror that we talk ourselves into around our eventual decision to come out, whether it's in the workplace or to family. 
What advice do you have for them now being on the other side? And the way you described it to me is as standing waiting to go on the air with Matt Lauer. And you literally were as afraid and as nervous as you'd been in your lifetime. Um, what, what advice do you have to this room as someone who's now been on the other side of that? Well, I never like to be in the position of giving advice because it sounds like I know something that you don't. And the, the truth is, I, I don't know that I do. I, I think it's never what we think it's going to be. That's, that's really all. It's never what you think it's going to be. There's always going to be someone who's going to go, ew, you know, because they don't know. And most people who have that kind of reaction have it because they don't know anybody who's gay. So they have, as, as, as we're just saying, it's a human face. You know, so you get to be the gay someone knows. And you, know, you get to carry the message in a way that someone, you know, to change someone's opinion. You get to be the walking encyclopedic um, totality of a gay person for someone who doesn't know. And you know, most of the people will just go, oh yeah, I thought so. <laughs> exactly. Or so, you know, that it's, it's, it's not as big a deal as we think it is. Yeah. I think that's absolutely right. And it's interesting in the many stories that we've heard today, and I think it was mentioned on one of the videos, you, you don't want to become the gay at, person at work, the lesbian, etc. cetera. Mm. But the reality is until we put that human face on it, others around us cannot feel that, that same ability to come out and feel even that much safer. And I think Rick mentioned this in his discussion mm -hmm. uh, earlier. Well, let's go to some of the tweet questions here. Um, here's our first one from the audience. How did your partner handle all of the press surrounding your coming out? Bet that was fun. Nancy didn't like it at all. <laughs> <laughs> well, Nancy's been out since she was 22. And uh, so, you know, she had a hard enough time with me go, you know, we'd be out in public and I go, oh, you know, someone's watching. Stop it. Oh, you know, she put up with it for a while, but it was, it was annoying. But I think it was, uh, it, it was less about my talking about it or writing about it. It was, it, it was the whole thing about any time you're with someone in the press situation and one person is getting tons of attention and they're basically going, excuse me, would you get out of the way? so we can get to this other person. And Nancy, right. Nancy was just being, feeling marginalized. And it's like, hello, we're together here. So, um, but she's been the, the best support and uh, the best uh, vocal experience that, I, that I've been able to connect to. It's been wonderful for me. Yeah. Well, and probably a good support because she had been through this before as well, probably not quite so publicly. Yeah, and she and well, she was a she's a, a contractor now. She started out in the all male industry. She was a carpenter, yeah, and she you know she was a builder, and she was with all male crews who were hitting on her all the time. And she was basically saying, "I'm gay for Christ's sake," <laughs> you know, <laughs> which you know that's just I guess what you had to do. Absolutely. I never had to do that. <laughs> exactly. We have another one from the audience. Um, tell us about your book. What was the biggest revelation you had while you were writing it? Mm. I think. Well, uh, there are a couple of them. Um, part of me thought, okay, this is revenge. You know, because I'd been silenced. I felt silenced so much of my life, I felt like I'd had no voice. And uh, because I'd been in an abusive marriage for 15 years, that really shut me up fast. Uh, I thought, okay, this is a way that I can get back. And in the writing, I found, you know, I found I had no stomach for it. I didn't. I didn't get any pleasure out of writing right. stuff. So there was, you know, I, I was really very kind to my ex-husband. Um, I said actually some nice things, well, one or two nice things. Um, well, if you got a short list, you know, you do the best you can. Um, <laughs> but it, wa it wasn't a forum for that. Right. You know, uh, if I wanted to do a job on him, I could have. And it, I would, there was no upside to me. I wasn't going to look any better. If, if, to do that. And um, there was also, I'd had a business relationship with someone that where I'd got taken down terribly and uh, very badly treated. I lost a lot of money and uh, it, was, but it was from my own stupidity. And, but I had written about it to maybe thinking, oh, well, someone he knows will read this. And, and then I found out that in our lawsuit, he'd had a, um, oh, now I can't remember what it's called, but I, I, could, not, no, I could not disparage him in any way. I hate when that happens. Yeah, and I thought, but once I had to take that out, 
I felt free again because I thought, I don't have to be that person. Yeah. I didn't want to be that person anymore. So, and, and I also, as I said, I learned that, okay, that, you know, I've, I've gone through the breast cancer, I've gone through the, uh, the, the abusive situation, I don't have to do that anymore, and I can tell people what it was like for me, what my thinking was, what I got to change, and maybe be a force for change in that arena too. Absolutely, and, and what a release too, I think, to get rid of that baggage, and to be able to focus on that future in a way by telling your past, right? Yeah, and as you can see, that you know, it still comes up. I still feel the need to say, you know, to be mean once in a while, and I don't like it. Yeah. You know, I don't like that aspect of my personality, but it's so much better than it used to be. <laughs> so. Well, let's ask one more here. Um, over the course of your career, what changes have you seen in Hollywood around LGBT mm. issues? And certainly, there's been mm. a ton of press around that recently with you know, Modern Family, take you know racking the Emmys up uh, this year, et cetera. Yeah. I, you know, and I, I love to see that. I do not have my fingers on the pulse of Hollywood. You know, I, I, I haven't worked for some, actually I haven't, I haven't worked as an actor since I came out. I don't necessarily, I don't necessarily think that that's, there's a connection. I think it's just, right. you know, the ageism deal. But uh, I, I've never, I've always sort of lived alongside the community. I've never lived in it. But it, I think it's no, uh, no accident that people are excited to see the uh, gay and lesbian uh, and transgender representation, yeah. that there are voices there. And uh, every, every time I go to the gym, I try to time it so that I can watch Will and Grace on, <laughs> while I'm on the elliptical, and I can get uh, two episodes, and I, never, I don't watch television at home, and to be able, I've, I'm falling off the elliptical laughing so hard. <laughs> and I thought that, you know, I feel it's a shame that that was gone. Right. N now, you know, I don't know how much more is out there, and, but I know that there are a lot of people coming out left and right. You cannot turn on the television without some actor or, uh, or actress, actress coming out, and I think that's great. And may it pass faster and faster. Oh yeah, her, okay, gone. Him too, great, gone. So, not gone just in the sense of not a big deal. Right. It's just, yeah, it, there's the, make it more normal. Right, and hopefully at some point we, people won't have to come out. It will be just part of who they are from the very beginning. Well, the thing is, who, but we don't know what the pro I didn't know what the process was. Right. I swear to God, I feel silly saying I was looking for some way coming off the boat, uh, you know, the, the um, cruise ship, and I thought, okay, I'm going to have to do this. I thought maybe I could write an announcement and put it in the papers or like a birth announcement. Right. <laughs> I'm pretty sure going on the lesbian cruise might have been the announcement. It just didn't feel like it at the time. <laughs> well, I, I, I knew I was courting exposure. Yeah. <laughs> Only cut 3,200 of us on there. I'm pretty sure somebody was going to recognize you. <laughs> yeah. Well. But you had a great time on that cruise, and that's I, part yes, of the I thing, did. right? Yes, I did. That was the whole point. Exactly. There you go. Um, well, Meredith, thank you so much for spending the time with us here this morning. It, as you saw last night by the, re by the reaction you had, um, oh, we great. were out in the reception. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you so much for being here today, sharing your story. I know you're going to be around for your book signing later, yeah. um, so all of you will get a chance to, to meet the gracious and wonderful Meredith Baxter. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, oh, stop it.